Yeah, great team win. Um, don't need to be said anybody that watched it. It was a great team win. I thought the win was going to be a big factor, and not so much offensively, but special teams. The wind's blown 20, 20 plus. Field position is going to change. So we were going to we were going to defer. We've been taking the ball and trying to be aggressive, but we were definitely going to take the win and try to pin them. And but they won the toss and thought ah, that stinks. And then looked up and there was three minutes going the first quarter. We were up seven nothing. I thought ah, glad they won the toss. This worked out good. So the key is that first drive set the tone for the whole game. Um, we we kind of plotted the ball down the field. We ran the ball effectively on that drive. We had we had three three. I think we had four third down conversions. The last one was from the six inch line. But we had Kenny on a little short one. We had Joe on a short one. Then Brett made a great play and scrambled and found Cade. And again, I always talk to get like pitching and catching is so underrated in the game of football. Like besides a couple of drops first quarter, like we catch the day. So we ended the little five yard completion on third and four. No one remembers, but if you don't have those little plays and you're efficient throwing the ball, we say hundred percent or five yards and we kept that drive alive and then punch it in. Then you look up and it's like frustrating that fumble. Cause we could have really pounced on them. Um, we, we had the momentum going, we had the ball down there and, and we fumble, um, which is not good. And then you look up, it's like seven nothing. We're dominating the game, and you, you, in the back of your mind, you say, like again, all the we all all of us sports people, fans, coaches, we all think we've all like, and you just got to keep fighting the demons of because we're so big on power of the mind. I mean, so big on it, like what you think you can will, you know. But that drive right before the half was key. We got seven, and we talked all 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 the time, all every year. We talk about it's like we got good players, and not everybody gets to play a lot. And guys can do things, and they're like good at their job, but there are so many better at their job, you know. And then Nate Mersh, man, that guy, Nate Mersh really had a great off season, and played it all this year. And he can run and catch, but I thought he's gonna be in January. I thought he's gonna be a bigger part of. It. I thought he'd be flexed out, but then we got some transfer wideouts that are pretty good, you know. And we got some young wideouts that are pretty good. And all of a sudden, the receiver room where I thought like were some of his opportunities. And again, he's we talk about be ready, be ready. And then the big play it was a good throw by Brett, but it was a nice catch by a six five guy who reached out in the corner of the end zone. It's like ready for your moment. Not pouting, not soaking, and again, you do that. We all pout, and like, but then you come back and you practice hard and you get prepared and to have the, to be ready. You know, no gauge today again. There's, a, I think we can get him back next week. We'll see, but again, that's that's our best football player. Like, we got a lot of good football players. He's head and shoulders our best football player. Not him. No cold iron today. You know, and then Merce steps up and in cold iron or uh, 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 Bolden and DeGerald did a good job. But that was a key. And then you go in a half and it's like, yeah, we should be up more, but. Just keep plodding away. Just keep plodding away, you know. And we did. We came the second half. And we just kind of plod away. They moved the ball over. We get a stop. And then we start moving the ball. So another 10-minute drive in the fourth quarter. And um, really efficient game. But we couldn't, again, anybody was at BG last year could not run the ball an inch on them. I mean, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. Watch the tape. Like, we couldn't run the ball first. So they dominated us. All right. From the, from the first drive, our old line really was getting – it was even, even or a push. It was never – it wasn't like last year where we couldn't protect our quarterback last year. We couldn't block him last year, you know. So they – they and they owned it. And it wasn't like we're trying to beat them up over last year. But you got to watch it. the same guys. Like, they, they lost a really good DM, but they got a lot of the same players. And, you know, they held Michigan at 304 yards. All right? The Buckeyes can't hold Michigan at 304 yards. Like, they held Michigan at 304 yards. I mean, that's – I mean, that Michigan's pretty unbelievable and awesome, you know. They go to Georgia Tech. They score 38 straight points against Georgia Tech. And they stop them, all right, and, and – Again, we made them look a lot worse than they were. Our defense was fantastic, and, and our offense, that's, that's the most physical we've been. we got a ways to go. We're not physical enough on that side of the ball, but that, that, was, that was a really nice step in the right direction. Um, so we just mentioned it's the first shutout you guys have pitched and since, since 2007. Yeah, how that? That's surprising. Do you, do you feel like you owe that a little bit to this super aggressive style you're playing with, kind of just like, wear the other team down and then you can really let your players shine yeah i think i again it's just surprising we almost had a shutout last week uh but not really they scored the first drive so it's not really almost a shutout it just looks like it at the end <laughs> scored five minutes in the game um but we we're pretty good on defense i'm surprised that we haven't had a shutout but it's, it is hard it shows how hard it is to get a shutout you know <laughs> we play a lot of a lot of good defense around here but nowadays but last week i really felt like not, I know the defense controlled the game last. Anybody was at the game, they controlled it. Offense did enough to help us pitch in. We did some good things. ST was solid, but defense today, offense controlled the game. Like from start to finish, it was they played 18 snaps in the first half. Like that's 18 snaps, one half is an insane. You know, that's 36 snaps for a game. That's you know, and our defense was good, but that's so that 
offense definitely deserves part of the shutout, just like we always say, it always works together. Uh, as you mentioned with the, with the shutout there, that speaks for itself to a certain extent. But I'm not sure if everybody, casual fan or whatever, would realize how many dynamic, explosive playmakers BG has that can put points up in a hurry, although it did come out last week with Georgia Tech. Yeah, it scored 38 points, and, you know, Hilaire is a proven Mac. I mean, he's a great player in our league last year. He was, he's, a, he's a legit wide out. Um, they have a slew of backs. Obviously, the big boy last week, um, I forget his name, Stewart, you know, he ran, ran all over him. Um, showed that if we let him out today, he got, got some stuff done. But they've they got good skill guys. They've, they're certainly capable. Again, like I said, they're better than we made them look today. We played really well, and they probably didn't play their best football. They got really good tight ends, I and mean, they, got, they got guys. I mean, definitely so. Uh, Coach, you guys ran for uh, nearly 200 on the ground, and Kenny and Rashad had uh, played a very big part in today's victory. Do you see Kenny and Rashad being a two-headed monster for your offense? And Yeah, Moe's KD. Table? we got to get them more involved. It's hard. We, we ran the ball more today, which was nice. Um, Moe's got five carries. we got to – Moe's can help us. He looked – you know, we got we got good backs. we got to keep – good thing we keep him fresh. Keep him – if we block well, we'll get more carries. Uh Gabbert was huge today. Statistically, obviously, he's good. 15 for 18, 170, and two touchdowns. That's a good day. Like, um, rushes, his 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 value of running the football is insanely underrated. It's every – I mean, it's been his whole career. I mean, it's just he has such a good feel in the pocket. Like, when he takes off the run, he doesn't – like, some guys take off the run, they get sacked. He, he Like, he always – there's there's times he throws the ball away. There's times – he sits in there and makes a throw and completes one. There's other times I've said it since he got here. His pocket presence, you can't coach it. It's it's a God given. It's a football, you know, a quarterback family. I think the averages have like something something in their in their blood that they get, you know. But again, he pulls out there, then he pulled a couple of the the run plays and they were trying to take away the run and got us some key first downs. And then he just managed a game. We we, you know, they throw a lot at you. And it's hard to see. They do a great job disguising, and you really can't see it from the sidelines. Like we said on Sunday, like the only guy that can see this is Brett. Like there's no – even in the box, like they do so many different – they run different fronts. I mean, they run fronts with three linemen on the same side of the ball. They just do a lot of stuff, and that's why they've been good on defense. We didn't handle any of it last year. We just kept running plays that – we didn't know where they were coming from, and half the time they were coming right into play, and we just kept getting smacked, you know. And we said, hey, we're going to go through that again. I hope not so. But he, we put a lot on his plate as the week went on. You know, we had a couple of key first downs on a pass play we put in uh, put in on Friday's walkthrough. Like, we, we have the – I mean, we have the elements, but we put it together, and we said, hey, you got to read all these coverages and figure it out. And he found the guy every time. So his physical was awesome, as usual. What his mental – what he did to manage the game for us offensively and put us in – the right protection, the right plays over and over. And with all their pressures, trying not to just run into the dang pressure and hit it right in the teeth because I don't care how good you are. So very undervalued, but he had, he had a big-time game for our offense today. How good is Nicholson? I mean, he, he boots one for 52 <laughs> today. I mean, it's nice to have somebody like no, that exactly. that can step up there for you. Now, when Sloman graduated, I was kind of like <laughs> kind of sad, kind of happy. He helped us win a lot of games here, you know, and – uh, and Graham's, you know, just picked up. And it really, Graham, way better than Sam as a young guy. Like, Sam really, you know, freshman year just kicked off. And then sophomore year, he was, he, was, he was a good kicker. Then junior and senior year, he really took off where Graham's been. Since I still remember running him out there at Minnesota as a freshman, thinking 44 yards, why am I – ah, is he even worth it? Should we just go for it? He banged it right through there. He's been banging him through ever since. You know, and he don't ever miss in practice. Like, it's, it's almost stupid. We're down to, like, two minutes of extra point field goal. You know, it's like – do we need to sit here and watch him make 20 kicks? Like, can we just watch him make four and then move on? Like, you know, and then Bev again, like, we didn't, I don't know, we do we punt what one time? It's always good when you punt once unless you turn over. So, um, but again, him and Bev have been huge for us, you know, the whole year, the whole year.